Hey what's going on guys and welcome to my gear video where I compare my old gear versus my new gear and I pretty much just want to talk through all my new gear and my old gear and tell you why I bought it and why I've given up on it and why it wasn't really good or why it is good I really haven't made a gear video on my channel before because I really didn't think I but now the time has come because I've got a gear update and I just want to show you all my gear really what's in my bag pretty much and what used to be my bag and what used to be my bag got a whole lot of stuff we're going to go through hopefully this video isn't going to be too long but um yeah I think we'll start off strong with my old bag now this thing it was good it was really good it had lots of pockets and had little implants inside with velcros that you could fit your gear in and it was pretty good but I could only ever carry my gear in it. I could never carry a drink or anything like that because I would never have enough room. And especially now, now I've got even more gear. Um, and it just looked a bit ridiculous on me because it was really, really small and I'm really, really big. All of the zips are pretty much seized up. They've all rusted and seized up. So, you know, it wasn't the greatest bag in the world. So, yeah, it did last me a while, but I need something a little bigger. And that's when I got this beast, which is like, oh, it's like a hybrid between a camera bag and like a hiking bag. Uh, it, it didn't have the same implants like uh, this one did, but it had, it came with these little red boxes that you could put your lenses and cameras in, which are downstairs, I didn't bring them up, but they are really useful, that's what I put my camera in now. And you can open it, like, you can do this really unique thing. It has like a, a zip like you have in your coat, and which is really easy to get into it. And it also has this top hatch, this hard top hatch for protecting, you know, like fragile things. And that's where I put my batteries and some of my filters. And that's, really, that's a very useful part. And it acts as like a lid as well. So you can go straight down into the bag instead of pulling like the door open. And two straps for my tripods. And yeah, this is a proper camera bag. It's partly waterproof. It came with a waterproof bag as well. Got plenty of uh, compartments on it. You've got a chest strap and waist strap. Although the, the waist strap doesn't fit me, unfortunately. But yeah. It's, it's served me well this bag, but I am looking for an upgrade quite soon because when I do more hiking and get more fitter, I want a bit of a bigger bag, like a proper hiking bag probably, but I'll still keep that bag um, on the down low just so you know, little photography trips. I'm going to move on to my wide angle lens. Oh, what a beast. This was a brilliant lens. I got it mainly because I was doing vlogs and of course the sensor, crop sensors. Of course, Canon, whatever focal length you have is times 1.6. Stock lens I got with the uh, M50 here, uh, yeah, it's 15 millimeters, which is equivalent to like 20 odd or something, I don't know. So I needed something a bit more wider. That's why I got this, one of the smallest focal lengths you can, focal lengths you can get in a lens, 10 millimeters to 18 millimeters. And this was absolutely perfect for those wide angles. Especially when I was vlogging before. I don't vlog now, but I used to. See, it was a very, very nice lens. Image stabilisation. Autofocus. Absolutely brilliant. £200 I paid for this. Until... Until I fell face first into the mud. <laughs> With the M50, I fell face first into the mud when I was walking through some bog. Um, tripod went in. Camera went in. Completely smudged on talking about completely submerged in mud camera survived somehow the m50 survived not even a weather sealed body i completely cleaned it off but it's been a year now and my wide angle lens has still not recovered there's still a little tiny bit of compensation uh inside the lens and there's no really there's no way of really repairing it so maybe in the future i might pick up this lens again or i might get a better version of the lens you know like a red ring an owl lens this little thing this is my adapter now if you pay for 
the official adapter to get E lenses, EF lenses on to your M camera. If it's an M mount, it's slightly smaller, you're going to be paying like 200 quid. So I bought this little thing for 50 quid. It's not a brand one, but the quality is amazing. Both ends are metal. It hasn't served me wrong once. Done me wonders, it has. Because I didn't have a lot of money a couple of years ago, but now I have a bit more. Um, and originally I couldn't afford to buy more M lenses, and there wasn't a great range of them, and there still isn't. So I bought this instead, and bought like this lens and this lens because they were a lot cheaper. So yeah, I basically put this on whenever I wanted to use the zoom lens or the wide angle. And yeah, it did me wonders. But now, obviously I don't need it because I've got this beast, which we'll get on to soon. Next, um, is this. The Star 25. Can you call it a star? Maybe a Nova, because it's the dying star. It's terrible. And, oh, yeah. See, it's not even coming out now. These will last you about... A year if you're lucky. This one's lasted me about two years, but I've used it a great lot. And especially if you take it to the beach, almost all the legs are seized up, and yeah, I've lost you know the sticky thing for that to bend that down. This won't even come down now, so the extension pole is stuck, and yeah, only 10 quid or 15 quid or something on Amazon. This is the Amazon basic one they recommend to you at the top. When I had hardly any money I bought this. Um, which when I had like 200. And yeah I bought this because it was the cheapest one there. And had a lot of good reviews. But that was probably from amateurs. Stuff like that. So yeah. A very terrible tripod that one was. Very terrible. And obviously the tripod I have after that is the one you're on now. I've got to use that for that. But I can talk about that tripod right now. That tripod's the Manfrotto Combat Light, Compact Light, which I thought it would be better than it is. Um, it's done me, it's done me pretty good. But after a couple of months, when I got it in January, on my January holiday to ten Gran Canaria, um, the ball head part of it came really, really loose, and there was no way of tying it up, and it was just flopping all over the place. And eventually, we had to super glue it there. And it's still attached with super glue now because for some reason and other people complained about it as well that yeah for some reason the ballpoint comes really really loose and detaches so yeah we have to super glue that and the legs are starting to seize up now and yeah i'm still using the tripod now because i'm going to be using it for filming for the m50 which I guess we've got to move on to the M50 now because the M50, we're not getting rid of this beast because this is a hell of a good camera, one of the best cameras of 2018. And I'm really glad I bought it because it was a really good, uh, you know, mid range starting and beginning camera. And it really helped me to get a lot, a lot of great photos. But I've got to be honest with you, I'm trying to make it to the next step of landscape photography or photography in general. And this is not cutting it anymore. 24 megapixels. It's not that great anymore. We had that back in 2016. For a mid-range camera. Even before that. In some other brands. But yeah. Absolutely brilliant camera. So I paid £450 for this. Off of a grey. Off the grey market. This lens. You can pick this lens up for 100 quid new. Or 50 quid used that's how terrible the glass is not even metal uh so yeah i really really need an upgrade really so the m50 it's going to be a new filming camera absolutely brilliant vlogging camera uh even thomas heaton uses this as his vlogging camera and i use it as my main camera so that's saying something isn't it anyway this little thing was my lens adapter or is my lens adapter i'm not adapter but it's basically one of those things that you slide your lenses into, 14 quid, for the pack. And, yeah. I read reviews about it on Amazon. Don't buy this, terrible. It, they're plastic, they scratch really easy. And what do you know? They're plastic and they scratch really easy. I should have listened. This thing's really cheap. It's really hard to get things in and out of here. It's just complete rubbish plastic. 
the only thing that's metal is this spot that attaches to the camera for some reason. And although I'm going to still be using it, I am looking for an upgrade quite soon. Um, and these are my beloved duo filters that I always, always use, which is my ND8 and my polarizer for uh, the M50, which I'm no longer be using because I won't be doing photography with it unless that one runs out of battery and I have to move on to that one. So yeah, they're pretty beat up, scratched up and it's time to retire these little beasts. But oh, they were great. I gotta say, great. They weren't even that expensive, you know, but they did me wonders. <laughs> this is, I've had this for years because this is when I bought a really cheap tripod, uh, a selfie stick from Poundland and it came with this thing that you put your phone in and yeah, I don't even know why I still this is a backup because sometimes I lose the one that my phone is in right now and this is the last time I'm filming on my phone by the way guys because uh, I'll be filming on the M50 of course unless that runs out of battery and I have to go after that or when I'm on holiday I might not be taking that camera because this one's really heavy so I'll probably be on that um, but yeah it's hard to go with a bit of blue tech um but you know it did me all right good backup but i probably won't be using that anymore anyway that's pretty much all the old gear and now here's the real exciting bit to talk about is all my new gear i'm gonna get rid of the old stuff ironically with my new gear out of the way first this is my video micro and oh my god what a good mic this is this is absolutely brilliant shame i can't put it on now i did get a phone adapter um, phone adapter wire to put it in the phone but for some reason it didn't work that's wasted money as well so yeah um, now most audio audio after this video will be wind protected and absolutely brilliant because the main thing the main problem with my videos right now is that Whenever I'm somewhere windy, you know, it's always wind noise. But I can't get rid of it because I don't have a mic for my phone. And I don't have a secondary camera. But now I do. So, yeah, I'll be going on the M50. Um, this is a shutter release. And when it came, I was like, oh, let's go plug it in. That looks really small. And what do you know? I think it's a 2.5 millimeter. Uh, jack so turns out my camera didn't have one so they bought an adapter for it and it didn't work because it thought a microphone was plugged in but now i've just found out that the nighty d has one and i think it's because that one was the amateur camera it didn't have one but because this one's a semi-professional it's got one so yeah Shutter release. Can't wait to be using that now. It's gonna be a lot better than waiting two seconds for the exposure, and you know, not having to connect my phone to my camera just to do a bulb shot. Now I can just hold this button down, and it'll take a shot for me. This wire getting in the way. Why is that the way? My new filters I haven't even used yet. Newer again, but these ones. Are actually glass. See, I haven't even opened them. A massive, massive difference between that. Look at the size difference. Now I've got to deal with these. See, so yeah, I've got a set of ND filters here and a polarizer. I had to buy the polarizer separately. The polarizer is massive and brilliant quality. Metal outside, all glass, brilliant quality. Got three ND filters, ND2, ND6, and ND10, I think. I'm going to be missing out the ND8, ND8. This is the Nifty 50. Nifty 50, I just picked this up a couple of months ago, £100. Very good buy. And you know, it's pretty quality as well, it's metal. And I've used it a couple of times. I don't use it that often though because I've never really ha uh, had to. Because I've never really needed to go down to a 1.8 aperture, which this one has. And 
This is my zoom lens. Hundred pounds. My new, you know, short range lens. Because I like to have a zoom lens, lens and a short range lens. That costs six hundred pounds. So, if you can look between the dots, my next upgrade will have to be a zoom lens. I'm gonna have to get a nice new zoom lens because this one I can't even put filters on it because it came broken from the grey market again and I'll be making a video on the grey market soon because uh, this came from the grey market and it was a complete nightmare I'm not going to talk about it in this video but in a few in a video in a couple of weeks maybe in a, even in a week anyway this lens it, it's all right the image quality is all right um, so that's all I can say about it really it's it's all right you know I try not to use it but Sometimes I have to, because I try to go for the grand vistas. Uh, this is my newer stabilizer. So as you can see in some of my videos, I've got a cameraman, and most of the time the cameraman will have this to keep it very stable. Thirty-five pounds for this. I don't have some other parts of it, but yeah. I like to just have it like this, small and light, uh, and it's great. It's just a great, you know, stabilizer to keep the camera in stable. Uh, because yeah, you know, got to have stable videos these days. Yeah, it's rusting up a bit, but nothing to worry about. And it's my beloved, beloved, beloved GoPro session. I got this in 2017, and I saved up. Hundred pounds to buy it, hundred and fifty pounds. I was like, oh, I can't wait. And here it is. Almost three years later, still working. Although this head mount piece, I've had to buy three times now because that's just broke. Uh, but yeah, I use this when I'm rushing, when I'm going to get unique first-person shots, and yeah, I might be looking for an upgrade soon. No. But I don't use it enough to want to get an upgrade, but I do, I would like a screen one. Um, next is my new tripod. And this one's great quality. Metal all around. And yeah, I really, I haven't even used it yet. Ball head again. I like my ball heads. Uh, I might be getting an owl bracket soon, sooner or later. Um, and this one can flip upside down if you do something. I thought you do it, but yeah, it can flip upside down so the middle pot, uh, column can be in the middle so you can get really, really low, low, low shots. And yeah, this one has a little uh, thing hook so you can hook some uh, weight to it as well. A much heavier tripod than the one you're on now because one problem I had with that tripod when it was windy. Mm, so much movement I could barely get any long exposure photos so this is a well needed upgrade and yeah lastly <laughs> is these two things I'm gonna take this off for a minute I just want to talk about my new camera the Canon 19e it just came out in September. New camera, new sensor. This sensor is 32.5 megapixels compared to 24 megapixels extra, like 8.5 megapixels. Um, which is, you know, it's not too much of an upgrade, but there's a whole lot more upgrades in this body than just the sensor. Yeah, but it's a DLSR, so a bit different, a bit more heavy done my mirrorless camera I am kind of regretting this purchase I should have got the new uh, Canon M6 Mark II which got the same sensor but no viewfinder a lot lighter um, but these tend to be a bit more professional and you know I want to look the part, part as well I haven't had a DLSR before so it's going to take me some time to get used to but I'm just 
starting to get used to it yet. I haven't had a photo shoot with it yet. Um, from what I've heard, it's a brilliant camera. And I'll be making a nice real world review on this soon. Um, maybe down at Dirtle Door. So yeah, look out for that. That'll be in a couple of weeks. Maybe even a week. I don't know. Absolutely brilliant though. Can't wait to go in the field and test this baby. New camera. Well needed upgrade. And finally. You know, out of everyone I've been watching. All of the landscape photographers. All of the reviews about cameras and stuff like that. Or do you need an upgrade videos. They've all said. Don't upgrade your body. Upgrade your glass. <laughs> This piece of glass is worth £650, I'm pretty sure. Retail, I got it for about 500 or 450 I'm not sure, something like that. And, oh, my God. The reviews I've heard about this. Christine Frost Photography? I don't know. Something like that. He's the one who does the reviews on all of the lenses. And he says it's one of the best lenses that he's ever tried. And it was in, like, I was researching for a new lens. Because this comes with a stock 18 to 55 millimeter, you know, not even a red ring. So I wanted some real, real good quality glass. So that's why I got this baby. And it's a Sigma. It's not a Canon. It's a Sigma. Sigma 18 to 35 uh, millimeter. And art lens, which art lens, Sigma art lenses, they're the equivalent to our lenses, pretty much. And the image quality on this, uh, he couldn't even tell, like, it was that good. When he did a review on it, it was just so good. I'll link to the video, probably. But, yeah, this is an amazing, amazing lens of what I've heard. And, yeah, I can't wait to use this thing. And the thing about it, you know when you're standing zoom lenses, your aperture tends to go up when you zoom. This one can stay at f1.8 through 18mm all the way to 35mm. So the whole range, I can have an f-stop of 1.8. That is so light. And oh my god. I can get some really, really good out-of-focus images with this. Or blurry background. And oh, I just cannot wait. So yeah. New camera. The biggest upgrade is the glass. If I can get it on, come on. So yeah, a lot heavier though. I tell you, this one's about two and a half k uh, kilograms, and that's the M50. Is about like five hundred. The whole thing, probably even less. The difference, there's a lot of difference. So, you know, I'm going to be lugging this thing around, which is a lot, lot, lot more heavier than this. Which is a downside, but I'm willing to compromise. What a mess. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope I give, I uh, can give you some good advice today. You know, if you need an upgrade, go for it. If you don't have the money for it, you know, weigh it out. Just get what, get what, just get what's within your, uh, just get what was, just get what's, just get what's, just get what's, just get what's, just get what's within your price range. This, this whole thing cost me £1,300 for the camera and lens, including with a tripod and filters, um, it came out to be about five, uh, Fifteen hundred pounds, one thousand five hundred pounds, and this ain't even the max level you can get. You can get lenses ten grand. You can get bodies like thirteen hundred grand. If I bought this at retail, this would cost me about two grand just for the body. So you know, if you can, if you want to shop in the grey market, like I, I don't want to recommend E Global. Or Toby deals, but they're the only two you can really get. They come, they ship these out from China, 
so they don't have to pay all the Western prices, you know, that they add on, which is an extra £300 for the body. If I put it on Amazon, if I bought this body on Amazon, it would be £1,150. I bought it on eGlobal for £820. Massive discount. But do your research on the company first. And, you know, sometimes it's not worth taking a risk. Because if you're seeing my next video that I make, uh, it won't be next, I don't know if it'll be my next video, but just look out for a video titled um, My Nightmare uh, with buying my new camera or something along those lines. And I'll tell you all about how my life got turned, flipped, upside down.